Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 6 of Sonic Omens. Previously, Sonic and Shadow were in pursuit of Eggman, and the Exiled has made his grand appearance. Now that Shadow has knocked down Sonic, um, we'll see what happens next. Oh, he has waked me up. Uh, ow, my head. Dang it! Why, Shadow? Why'd you do it? I believe I can answer that. Eggman! Ah. In the flesh! And if it wasn't for my on-the-spot brilliance, you never would have made it out alive. Kim! <coughs> Your fox boyfriend offered some assistance too, I guess. So... Ugh. I can't believe it. That was... Indeed. A Matarex. You and that boy Thorndike always had a strong sense of justice. But this time, even you can't argue. He screwed up. You mean Chris? What are you saying, Eggman? What does he have to do with what's going on? Hmm. Thorndike was certainly ambitious. As you know, traveling to different dimensions wasn't in perfect science back then. Even for the likes of me. Messing with the very fabric of time and space can wreak and toll havoc on a living organism. And unfortunately for your old friend, doing so twice within a short period of time caused his body to age rapidly, giving him roughly 15 years to live. Well, climbing up to the GON's highest position and changing their war-torn ways was no small feat. And during that time of maintaining peace, he had found a new friend. Does that mean... I don't know how or where they met, but this Metarex who calls himself the Exiled was impressed with Chris's naive ideologies to change the world for the better. So they worked together closely for the time he had left. And once Chris was... gone... The bureaucratic suits, internal politics reverted their interests back to the armored conflict. The exiled saw Thorndike's life work destroyed and wanted nothing to do with Juan any longer. He has recruited Shadow for his own gains, and now he wants to manipulate time itself. It is already possible to manipulate time using Chaos Control with a Chaos Emerald. So why does the exiled need all of them? You should already know the answer for that one. Twin Tails, think! A copious amount of energy is needed to rip open a hole in the fabric of time and space. I had already attempted this once before, but it ended in failure. I may have slightly miscalculated the numbers. <laughs> Forgot to carry the three. But the Exile has found the solution. Although it looks like he didn't divulge the details to Shadow. All right, Egghead. If you know the details, then spill it. What is the solution? Don't get your quills in the knot, Sonic. There's only one method of creating more energy than what the Emeralds can produce on their own. And that is by their destruction. Huh? The burst would be enormous. Enough for the journey to the dawn of time itself. And yet... N no way. I, I don't believe it. That kind of destructive power would destroy life as we know it. Our friends would be gone. You may not believe it, but the Omens surely do. Gnarl, Vortex, Ember, those ancient guardians of chaos are deeply connected to the Emeralds. If the Emeralds themselves are in immediate danger, they are awakened from their slumber in order to protect their master. I have encountered Ember, and that bringer of chaos single-handedly destroyed my entire robot fleet. It took me a whole week to manufacture them. Hmm? What? You yourselves have encountered Gnarl. If they believe in this impending danger, then it would be wise to believe as well. It doesn't matter what they believe, because we're gonna stop this exiled guy! Yeah! Only I am allowed to take over this planet! And I'm not going to let some third-rate villain take that away from me! Hey! Is this where I think it is? Oh, yes. The Exiled Citadel. Our destination! Yeah... <sighs> that was a lot to take in, but um, so far from what I understand... Uh, Chris... was 
really trying to find a solution to spread the chaos energy to both worlds and pretty much sacrificed portions of his life to do so so now because of the diamonds breaking now these omen uh, monsters are now wreaking havoc or you know guardians of the chaos you know what that might be could they they could be the servers of the seven chaos as if you recall to call also Tails, the reactor's power is at 50%. You might not have enough if you fly too high. Keep that in mind. Eggman, thank you. I fucking hate the four kids music. I'm gonna keep saying that. Uh... I will distract the main perimeter security on my cell. And you, since the tornado cannot gain the altitude, This place... Chris wanted to unite his world with ours. But he never got to before he... Then Eggman took advantage of Chris's dream when the time of awakening happened. Are you talking about the Dark Gaia incident? Yeah. Temples aren't supposed to be in this world, like human cities in our dimension. If the Emeralds disappear, so will her home. We have to find Exile quickly! He must be hiding in one of these rifts. Then let's get looking. How did he get the fifth one? I suppose it is only natural for friends to talk about each other. We're not friends. I still haven't forgiven you for all the things you've done. Not for Earth, not for Chip, and certainly not for Angel Island. But here we are. It's funny. No, Eggman, it's not funny. Especially this level right here. Let me just get this out the way right now. Yeah. Weeping Rift fucking sucks. Let's go over all the problems. Some of you may have noticed already the giant burst of energy that came through the fucking ground. Yeah, that. That is a one-hit kill hazard. It don't matter how much health the tornado has. One burst is enough to end it. Then we have these, which I would say are better than what was going on Wild Range, but not by much. And then we got the lasers. Oh, dear God, lasers. Uh, lasers are everywhere. All of the problems that the tornado stages had and could have are here in full force. I hate this. <sighs> oh my god, man. Like, seriously. Okay, I honestly would rather play Star Fox Zero than th to go through this shit again. And that's not even an insult because I actually enjoyed Star Fox Zero. I know that the motion controls were forced, but at least it wasn't. A deal breaker, they really should port that to Switch and, you know, add actual controller support. Platinum games, but. Weeping Rift really makes me weep and cry. Just like that. Also, Sonic nonchalantly just on the plane here. I. back then said. I wish the Tails levels got better, and unfortunately, they do not. Why couldn't they just follow the Star Fox format? Just have an on-rail shooter where you're gunning down evil robots or mechs, whatever.
And then, um... You got your own range mode. And that's important for, uh... For, you know, levels like these, because... Think of it this way. Okay? Tails in the plane, right? Wouldn't it make sense... Oh, and then the performance dips here. Like, yeah. Like I said, all the problems, performance included. So yeah, bear with me, folks, because... The slowdown is real. Okay, here's how you actually design these plane levels. You have an on-rail shooter section. Hey, can you see where you're going? Fuck off, Tails. Um, you have an on-rail shooter section, right? And then you go to all range mode. And then you got a radar on the bottom right corner of your screen. So that way it tells you where Tails is, where the objectives are, where enemies are, where health pickups are. Not rings, because rings are all over the damn place. Okay. Give me proper guidance. Tell me where anything is. And, and more importantly... Switches, because apparently... Switches are still the name of the game here, instead of just... Going for the goal. Okay? There's barely any enemies to shoot. Barely any obstacles to dodge. Like, even the control of the plane needs work. Like, just a complete overhaul. Give me Star Fox controls. Okay, I don't care if it's 64. I don't care if it's Assault. I don't care if it's Zero. Just give me motherfucking Star Fox controls. Because at this point... This is draining. The fact that I have to go through this. That anyone has to go through this. And, yeah. This might as well be the worst level in the entire game. Worse than Wild Ridge. Worse than Tree Palace. Okay. Hands down, the absolute rock, stone, boulder bottom of Sonic Omens. This right here. And also, you know, this performance is honestly not making anything better. If anyone is going to say what is the worst thing about Sonic Omens, is this. Okay. Trying to find these switches. Trying to avoid these one-hit kill hazards. Okay. Trying my best to stand clear and position the plane so that way it could just use the boost to get through. <laughs> get it? Seriously, you can't even get like a decent boss fight in some of these. The only boss fight that the tornado ever gets is now. You don't fight Amber. You know, how awesome would it be to fight against Amber like an actual Star Fox boss? And Star Fox has some good bosses too. But good god, also the frame rate picks up again. I don't know what the f fuck is happening. But anyways, uh, I like how these stones have a keyhole design to it, so that way it tells you what's unlocked or not. So if it's full of liquid, then it's unlocked. Watch out for these lasers, because yeah, these might just be one they kill, especially while boosting. But, okay, you get rid of the one hit kill shit, or at the very least, it causes consecutive damage. These might as well just do a small portion of damage. Energy shields while the medics are here. We need to destroy them. This area is the absolute fucking worst. You want to talk about why having a radar is important? It's because of shit like this. You need indicators to tell you when the enemies are open firing where the enemies are so that way I'm not wasting my motherfucking time hunting these bastards down. I am so fucking tired of this, okay? If you're gonna make enemies a mandatory... design to reach an objective, 
you better have the means to make this shit bearable because this right here is not bearable combined with the fact that the metaverse can respawn in certain areas and they can just swarm you like what okay that little exclamation point okay just like that like what the fuck is this bullshit trying to dodge well out of here but like this right here might as well sum up everything wrong with the tornado stages okay wild ridge could have been the ace in the hole if it knocked off some of the crap here is just stacks on stacks on stacks of problem after problem after problem and it makes me fucking sick inside Like that right there. I have no clue. I have no indicator. What is the other point? Can I tell me where the fuck these enemies are? No, it's just another way of saying you are being targeted. You are being shot at by what? It's not like I have a radar to tell me where these enemies are or what is shooting at him. I got nothing. Okay. I just want you to know, this is real. I'm not making this shit up. This is something that actually happens. And I have Tails here maintaining his distance so that way he doesn't get a laser right up the cockpit. And yes, you do have to destroy all the main meteorites just to unlock this barrier. Because that's exactly what he has to do. Like, come on, someone in the studio must have thought of a radar system or, you know, some other method to track down objectives. You know, anything. Like, anything. Like, did people actually play this and not think about adding a radar or just... But again, you follow the Star Fox formula. That is the only way I can think of to fix all of this. Performance dips here, right here. Like that's the only thing I can think of. Bravo, you were able to break through. Now, all together. Okay, so this part here. No, no, give him the red ring. G no, but give him the red ring, though. No, but the red ring, yes. I don't know how he got the fifth one. He never touched the fifth one. I don't even know where the fifth one is. Why is it sometimes that the red rings are just in the collected ones, but he didn't get any of them? God, my head hurts. Also, um, I don't know what it is, but when Tails is boosting and trying to aim for cover, it's almost as if that the stage itself is careening him to the side. I don't know why that is. Like, seriously, for anyone that played this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but the overall feeling. But for those who haven't played this, it feels like the stage is redirecting the tornado like this right here so that way he doesn't go in there but I want him in there oh my god fucking hell man like just oh my god oh my god Someone had to know. Someone had to have this idea. Like, you cannot tell me. Like, seriously, now now I'm starting to think that Star Fox is just underappreciated at this point. Because it's bad enough that the Switch doesn't have a fucking Star Fox game. Could have been zero. But it's, it's like... Is Star Fox even of high regard anymore to the fucking point where people don't even think to just incorporate Star Fox like gameplay in their own fan games like come on man what about what about afterburner fuck 
seriously, I would love to see a, a fan game that plays like Star Fox because I honestly, deep down, I kind of wish Star Fox would come back just like F Zero and Kid Icarus. I don't know why the fuck. Like on the side note here, I I am so fucking tired of Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing. You know, where's all the good shit at, man? Kid Icarus Uprising especially needs to come back, or at the very least get remade. m needs to come back. Star Fox needs to gain more traction, especially in the story department. God, all this potential for all these franchises in the Nintendo head, and they don't want to do shit. Thank God the ring is right there. I... No, like, no. A complete overhaul. A complete one. These tail stages are just... Why the fuck are they like this? Why? Sonic's carefree nature is putting everyone in danger again. And if they lure that beast here, we won't have time to go back. Why is Shadow always putting the blame on Sonic? What? You? Why? This should not be happening. I need you! Shadow's right. This shouldn't be happening. Because he put the past behind him. So, I have a question. How the fuck do you go from Weeping Rift to shit like this? This boss fight has absolutely no reason to exist. They must be behind all of this. Save me. In fact, earlier I said that there was a dumb plot point between Shadow and Exile, and we're gonna get to that, but this boss fight in particular is a goddamn fucking mess that I had no reason to be. Like I said, I said it once and I will fucking say it again. This is a Sonic fan game that was made out of spite. Because it, it, it almost as if that someone in the team really wanted the player to suffer, and that's what we're seeing here. Why the fuck is Maria a boss fight? And why is it like this? With this stupid, creepy, pasta up dog shit. You know, where Shadow is constantly taking a beating by these unholy lasers to the point where focusing just doesn't fucking work. Like, this might as well be the worst episode out of all of them, because look what we're seeing here. We got an awful Tails playing level where we're, it's filled to the brim with one-hit kills, a shit ton of meta rest that can just gun him down in a matter of seconds, and then we get this pointless boss fight. Okay, like I said, this, this cutscene coming up. will explain everything. I don't know how the fuck you got an air swing here. You know what? Fuck this fight. Oh no, the trauma! Time itself. They cannot return. And this is a trip that you will not be going on. I did, after all, grant your wish, have I not? The visions of Maria for the last two years. The one who has been calling for you has been at peace for a long time. Yes. You've played a role well. Gun's technology is useful for creating illusions and manipulating the fools. Liar! Liar! You, 
You were never intending on keeping your end of the deal. And Maria... Your desire was for the visions to stop. And they have stopped. For my desire, I will sacrifice everything. And I won't be stopped by you. After all, you're just a false life form. Why does Gun have drones that create illusions? And why the hell would Shadow ever consider trusting him? I won't let you down to erase those illusions. Why is Shadow a fucking buffoon in this game? Also, callback. I actually like this. Missile surfing. <sighs> Good luck out there. There won't be anything left to save if I don't speed up! Yep, home stretch, Citadel of the Lotus. Let's fucking end this because holy crap. Yeah. The plot point between Exile and Shadow makes no fucking sense to me because if memory serves, Shadow put the past behind him, so why the fuck is he having illusions? Yeah, nice callback to season three. Yep, brings my memories for me too, because I absolutely loved Sonic Guys back then and now, as an adult, um, I can safely say that um, Sonic Guys has aged like fucking milk of the almond flavor variety. But yes, why the fuck would Shadow ever consider trusting a meta race that he fought against before? Did he forget what the fuck the meta race were? Okay, why have illusions of Maria when he puts the past behind him? There is absolutely no reason for him to do this trauma bullshit again because it's like never mind the fact that he has amnesia no let's just have the past haunt him again via hallucinations that gun can add to their fucking drones for no reason at all it's the one plot point that I just don't understand like seriously the only game where I can think of that actually did Shadow Justice, and this was Light Speed Dash, is actually useful. Thank God. Like a few moments where it actually is worth a damn. Um, the only. Whoa, boy. Alright, let's try that again. The only Sonic game I can think of where it actually did Shadow Justice was Sonic 06, because. I can actually see the character development in that, where Mephiles said... Where he said... Humanity wasn't just jealous of its power, they feared it. And they used that as an excuse to pretty much fuck him over. And it wasn't until 06 that we finally get backstory behind why Omega was created. And Omega spilled the beans by saying the one that defeats and seals you, Shadow, is me. Because when someone or something becomes too powerful, it's seen as a threat. And then the world becomes his enemy. So at that point, it comes off as Shadow not being acknowledged as a hero. Also, this grind route, Jesus lordy, come on, get on there. Like, it, it comes off as Shadow not even being acknowledged for his efforts, even after... The bullshitter that was Shadow the Hedgehog with the dumbass black arm incident. Seriously, fuck that story. Like, seriously, fucking aliens? Like, what are you, retarded? Who the fuck wanted that story? See, this is why stories in Sonic games don't fucking work, especially of this caliber. To the point where characters just make it dumbass decisions. Or they just don't fucking think. And that's the case for Shadow here, because why are you trusting a Metarex? Why are you be believing what this dude is telling you? Seriously, and then it's like, we don't know much about Exile either. How he manipulated Gun, how, you know, he came on Earth anyway. It's like, 
there's plot holes in this story that honestly need to be cleaned up here. Seriously, and also the diving here might as well just not be diving. Might as well just, like, not like the diving from Unleashed Colors or Generations. I wish that were the case, because that's what should have happened here, because if he screws up, all his rings go, and he most likely have to restart the checkpoint, and then we'll get to those electric panels in a bit, because those are also a problem. But yeah, same deal with the Lotus. Um, Almost a solid stage here, if it weren't for, yeah, sectors like these, where he basically has to make or break it to the other side, because these are these are some long stretches here that he has to make, and the meta ranks are relentless, which means to him, mostly have to rely on either a boost or the light, the, yeah, the light speed attack. These sections here, where the diving is so stiff that he can barely move. Yeah, and this happens. Seriously, why could they seriously could not incorporate the diving from the modern games in this? But the diving actually feels good, or at the very least, looks like it has weight to it. Here, it feels like that I'm just fighting just to make the diving work here. Like this is not diving. Like no, no, the the diving from Unleashed Colors and Generations feels like actual diving here. Okay, and then we have these, which. Yeah, no. So there's two ways to yeah do this. Either aim for the dash rings or just boost enough to the point where he reaches the grappling hook so he can use his um, bracelet. Because sometimes it's best to do that than to just reach for the dash ring. Yeah, and make sure that the grappling hook is in view because if not, chances are he'll just fall off. Use the meta if you have to to get across because, yeah, the meta on the walls is at our lifesavers. The electricity will drain him of his boost, and the meta will continue their onslaught, like this part right here. Here, it's no problem because they're just attacking small groups. But yeah, the meta will be a swarm if Sonic is not careful. Oh my god, dude. Yep, and then on these sections here, just watch out for spikes. Boost if you have to. Use the light speed attack here. Bada beam, bada boom. Get rid of them. Light speed attack is your best friend. Make sure you have enough space for a second round. Because if they're not, yeah, if he's not careful, that happens. These guys are everywhere, and why are there just spikes on the fucking floor for no reason? Oh, this is my favorite part. <laughs> I have no clue why how this happened. This is something that just happened. I, I guess this is a common glitch in the game. <laughs> I'm just bobbing out at this point with this music. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Oh, this is awesome. I, I cannot believe that I actually got this. This is the best part right here. Like, out of all the things that could happen in this game is this. And also, this is a soft lock because... Respawning, respawns him at the spring. Uh, this is a soft lock. Yeah, I can't. He can't get out. He's stuck here. Like, he can't. Like, no, no, no. He has to, no. Like, okay, yeah, respawn, yes. But no, he has to, no. We have, I have to hit the restart button. No, no, restart this. All right, take two. All right, there you go. Woo! Oh, my Jesus. Okay, so yeah, wow. Also, we get to the brutal point of Sido the Lotus here and these electrical panels. Oh god, the slowdown works in my favor because this part is not the not the best. If for whatever reason Sonic is knocked off this thing, whether it be the electricity or the spikes or anything, um, nah, he has to restart it from the checkpoint, and it's kind of bullshit because. Yeah, like that. He has rings. 
but I guess him getting off of the ramp, this long ass ramp, equals immediate defeat. Jesus, like this, like, yeah. Or you know what? See, that's just something else I I need to I need to ask. The side stepping um, sections aren't really similar to the modern games either, because he could potentially sidestep not fully away from these panels, but just on the edge, and he'd still be in danger with the electricity. Like, oh my god, Sitting of the Lotus, I feel, Can't stop now. is both a good and a bad stage. Because, you know, yeah, it makes good use of the boosting, the light speed attack, and the grapple hook. But at the same time, the diving, and the, uh, the lasers, and running out the ramp. Like, it's such a problem. Ay. Yeah, that's right, how I feel. Exiled. Come on out. It's over. Sonic has every reason to put his hand on his shoulder, or if he you even have one. Wait. Oh yeah, and it's the portal from season two of Sonic X. The same portal that they used to go back to their home world. And Tails crashed his plane again. Well, oh, that's pretty. Alright, so those are all the diamonds shattering. And not like what happened in Sunny Battle. No, these things are like broke, broke. Oh, he's got the Psy Cooper cane. Grabbed him by the hair. Also, I think performance starts going ape shit around. Yeah, around. You're even yeah, you're here. So full of yourself. I heard much about you from Thorndike. He held you in such high regard. Your abilities. Your compassion. Yeah, here. Breaking Chris's expectations. You want to talk? What's next? You'll go back in time and return with your pals? Dark Oak. Mm. The one who had me thrown into your world. Really? The one who had me exiled as soon as I stood up against his lust for revenge. Really? No. Controller of the light. I just want to go home. Really? Home? You destroy everything and everyone because you feel a little homesick? Are these monsters also a part of the plan? They are the omens. The omens of the end of chaos. It was unexpected. But the reality where the emeralds no longer exist are doomed to be destroyed by them. This is the end of history. Yes. Spear! Does Mobius really need to be destroyed just because the diamonds are gone? Like, again, I wish there was actual backstory of the Chaos Diamonds because there's so much that we don't know about. That is not Chip's voice. Consider this your bad omen. Oh my god.
dude. Now you're the true controller of the light. Where's pickup line? All that is left is to break you. And this is going to do it for episode 6 of Sonic Omen. So the next episode, we are finally going mono and mono with the Exiled. So until then, look forward to it.